Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer here, and in today's video slash uh, blog post, I want to take you through a few of the steps I took to get my newer, or well used, Super Micro system boards up and running. So first off, the system board, the board that I decided to use was this X9 DRD uh, 7L and 4F JBOD board. Okay, uh, it isn't an X16; it's all X8 slots. It works really good for my intent use case uh, and so far I've had good luck with it but in setting it up I found uh, two issues uh, with it now not necessarily a problem with the system board it was that these system boards were used right so the login for the IPMI and, and IPMI is just a fancy word for headless device right so you can get into these headlessly you get an IP address on them you can can actually bring up the interface and, and that's the interface I was showing you here initially right you can get into this interface and you can control configure remote access the system it, it comes in handy the problem is getting logged into it and a lot of times the admin username has been reset and it hasn't been you know reset by the seller um, so it did it came in that way and it had a bunch of usernames and passwords on it didn't know what they were couldn't get in tried resetting the BIOS things like that and then that's when I found out that there's actually an IPMI configuration tool so first off you can if your board is equipped with IPMI you can actually go onto the Supermicro site go to the actual uh, you know device that you're looking for the model right and go down to their driver CD and when you download this particular uh, file it's gonna come with a package that will enable you to install the actual configuration IPMI config files onto a disk. And that is going to look like this. There it is. Sorry, it took me an extra second to get it up. So this is the actual file you download and it's actually a bunch of different utilities. It's going to have all your manuals and everything on it. And if you notice, there's a folder here called IPMI. And if we go into that folder, there's the IPMI view and config. We're looking for config and there's everything in there. Now you can do it in Windows, Linux, things like that. I'm looking for DOS, okay, and these are the files that I need. So what I do is I use Rufus, I make a free DOS boot disk onto USB, and then I copy these uh, files onto a folder on my USB drive, and then I have access to this IPMI config. That program enables me to reset the usernames. It also enables me to do other uh, functions such as disable intrusion prevention. All right, so with that history, and now we got the file, let's go ahead and look at the actual interface. Now, I'm doing this through the web interface. Of course, I've already got it fixed, right? So it's, it's already been resolved. Uh, but this is actually the interface that comes up when you go here. So when you start here, you get Java, you click right here, it'll actually download this little applet. You might have to enable it through your security settings and whammo, there you go. Now you got power control and everything you need. Uh, the disk I wanna boot to is this disk right here, which is the FreeDOS disk. And it's gonna go ahead and boot up and it, it actually boots uh, pretty quick. It uh, it doesn't give me any too any trouble, and there it goes, quick as can be. So now we can go in. Let's just do a simple directory. There's the one I want. CFG DOS is what I called it. DIR. There's the command. IP PMI CFG. Okay. Now I can type in different things. So example, let's try user list. Okay, there's all the users right now listed. So number two is the admin user, right? And from there, I can do such things as add, delete. I can actually do a, uh, so for example, I can do an IPMI. Um, and I think I'm gonna do a question mark here if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there it is. And there will be a bunch of the other commands and things you can do. Uh, you'll find towards the bottom of this list where will be all the user commands that you can work with. Okay, you can quite see there's, it's quite powerful utility, okay? All right, and there's all those user commands I was talking about. So you can see right there, there's a user password. So if I wanted to, I could actually come in here and say, you know, user set PWD, right? And then the user ID, which I think was two and whatever password I want. Even though it's spelled wrong, whatever I want to do, type in there. Once I hit enter, boom, the admin user's password is now reset. And then I can lock, log back into the IPMI with that new, uh, uh, password. So that was very handy uh, and that worked out well and that got me over that first hump. The second hurdle I had was the intrusion prevention or detection enablement on the, the uh, actual system board. So there's actually a, a jumper there and you can disable the jumper on the system board but what I found was that ESXi was still tripping on that sensor for some reason even though I told it to disable and there wasn't anything in the BIOS to disable it. Um, you know it just kept tripping 
jumpers jumper set to disable still doesn't work nothing in the bios so how do you fix it enter uh, ipmi and that's when you come in here and you'll enter this command in so we'll do ipmi right cfg and then we're going to do sdr sdr tells it list me out the sensors that are on my system okay and there's a big list of them let's see if we put a pipeline more on there if we can get it to pause it should nope it doesn't like that one. Oh well that's okay. What we're looking for is that very last one anyways, which is item number 285, which is the in in chassis intrusion detection. As you can see, it's listed as fail. That reports into ESXi, and then it gives you the sensor error, and it's really annoying, and it doesn't go away. It keeps coming back, uh, but that's easy to fix. So all you do is do your IPMI-SDR, you type in delete, and you type in 2885, which is the sensor number on my case. Your number might be different, but that's what it is for mine hit enter, reboot the system, problem solved. So there you go. There's fixing a really quick video, fixing two issues uh, with Super Micro System Boards using the IPI, IPMI config utility. Um, you're able to actually reset the usernames and uh, disable that sensor. Well, folks, I uh, hope you do enjoy or did enjoy the video. Uh, please leave your comments below, and maybe you've got a tip or two around this uh, configuration too. It, configuration tool <laughs> and do hit subscribe. Thank you.